Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Lori Smith of Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. It is 5.30 here in the morning, um, Wednesday morning, December 12th, 2012. And I'm glad to be here. I'm just praising God for this opportunity uh, to share you know, what I've learned you know, from the truth in God's Word. And hopefully, uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you know, we'll be able to understand what God's will is and what God is telling us through His Word. And um, just looking at biblical counseling information that I'm finding, you know, very helpful in my own personal walk with the Lord, and also um, just that I'm learning for my uh, course and certification in biblical counseling, and I find this information very helpful for me. And so I'm hoping that you know God will show us, you know, how how it can help us all, right? So we're looking at um, the topic from Adam Pulaski's PDF called Biblical Counseling Manual. And it's a PDF, you can find it just by typing in your browser, Biblical Counseling Manual or Adam Pulaski, uh, Biblical Counseling Manual. And uh, you can bring it up, it's a PDF you can download, and or you can get that from emmanuals.org. It's a church website um, with the whole course on there, uh, emmanuals.org. And so that's what we're looking at. We'll also be looking at the BCF, Biblical Counseling Foundation Self-Confrontation Manual, uh, a manual for in-depth discipleship by, uh, developed by John C. Broger. And um, we'll be taking a look at that as well. We'll start out with Adam Pulaski's Biblical Counseling Manual, where we left off on Monday. And I just wanted to keep on going there. The next section was the way you feel and the way you view yourself. You're, we're looking at depression, right? Uh, Adam Pulaski says, The way you feel and the way you view yourself, your relationships, and your circumstances are often indications of whether you are living to please yourself or living to please God. It is not the world or things of the world that should occupy our thoughts and time. But are you approaching life from God's perspective, living and thinking God's word? Uh, He says, fear, darkness, depression reveal an absence of loving God and my neighbor. So it is our thinking which refuses to be taught by Christ or anyone else. And this spirit exalts itself against God, the spirit of Antichrist. That's what what Adam Pulaski and uh, Steve Lynn say. And... um, when you look at it, the, the, when the first section where he says the way you feel and the way you view yourself, your relationships, your circumstances are often indications of whether we are living to please ourselves or living to please God. And that's so true. I mean, and, and this could be said of any circumstance in life, uh, you know, or facing any battle or any problem uh, that comes, uh, you know, along with life. Because as Jesus said, you know, you will have tribulation. There will be tribulation. <laughs> there will be trials and tribulations. There's going to be problems. And it all really stems on from what perspective we're looking at it from. And in living the old way, you know, in the in the flesh, of course we're going to see it the flesh way. We're going to see it through the flesh eyes. We're not going to see it um, through God's eyes. We're not going to see it through God's Word. But if we're in the Word of God and we're studying the Word of God and we're truly born again and we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us and living uh, in us and, and helping to guide us, um, then we're going to try every day to focus on how God wants me to to react and to to uh, to act in this in this particular situation, and the Bible is full of examples. The, the Old Testament and the New Testament are full. It's all about that. That's exactly what the whole Bible is about. If you go back and you look at every example of every person throughout history in the Bible that that in the, and where God wants us to know, this is my revealed will, and this is what they did. <laughs> And this is what I want you to do, and this is what I wanted them to do, and here's the outcome. You can see that really the whole Bible, that's exactly what it's about. It's about, are we living in the world? Are we serving uh, someone other than God? Are we serving ourselves? Are we serving the devil? Are we serving man? Or are we serving God? Are we living for someone else? Are we living for the devil? Or are we living for ourselves? Or are we living for God? We can say that about everything. We can say, are we walking with God or are we walking with the world? You know, are we thinking the way that God wants us to think and in, in, in a godly manner about things and feeling and acting in a godly manner or are we acting in the world's ways? This is exactly why the Bible, why God gave us his word to show us how to how to not walk in the worldly ways and how to um, live and and. and move about on this earth in a godly manner, in a way which honors and pleases God, and actually what he wanted for us in the beginning, which is love. And proper, you know, godly behavior. Right? 
so it's kind of interesting like when you when you think about that that's so true um this is about depression that they're talking about here but so it says if it, it, it's not the world or things of the world that should occupy your thoughts and time and time right but but you know we're supposed to be thinking about god god's word and we're supposed to be thinking from god's perspective and the only way to do that is to get into the work and actually study it out and allow the holy spirit to show us you know like what what, a, what how am i to handle this certain situation it's quite interesting they quote romans 14 17 18 first john 4 18 through 21 and they quote philippians 4 6 through 7 so we'll look at first john 4 18 through 21 and uh, I'm just going to read that right now. It says, um, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who also that he who loveth God loves his brother also. So, yeah, I mean, if, if a man say I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. He doesn't love God because you, you you cannot love God and have hatred in your heart. You cannot be serving God and have hatred. We can't serve two masters, you know. We can't serve the world and serve God at the same time. We can't serve the devil and serve God at the same time. And whatever it is that we're serving. If if we're truly walking in love, walking in the light and the truth of God's word, then we're going to be serving God. And therefore, we're going to have love towards our neighbor. We're not going to have hatred in our heart for anyone. And we're going to love and we're going to admonish. We're going to um, counsel, you know, with the help of the Holy Spirit. We're going to try to help these people, whoever it is that we're that they're give they're causing problems for us in our life. And And we're always going to pray. And that's what we should be doing, you know, praying for them, right? And praying that God would help us to show us how to react and move in certain circumstances. Because, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, everybody knows listening to my shows, I'm talking about abuse all the time. And that's my main goal because I feel like the Lord has led me to um, to talk about the unrighteous acts that people do against their brother and sister and children and whoever, neighbor, right? And that the world is just following the devil, and that's why this horrible stuff is happening. No one would do these horrible things to their children, to their neighbor, to their, to the, to to another person, if they weren't serving the devil. If you were serving God, you wouldn't be doing things like that. You wouldn't be hurting people intentionally to cause injury so that you could feel better. You wouldn't be doing these things because that's that's serving the devil, right? And so I feel, you know, I really feel led to speak out against these unrighteous acts, right? and ungodly evil acts, right? So that's what I'm doing. But the thing is, is like I I can't have hatred in my heart and serve God at the same time. And so it's really important, you know, I mean, talking about abuse, I'm looking at it, that's why I want to get into biblical, that's why I'm working on my biblical counseling certification. Um, And this, of course, won't help secular people, but I hope to be able to help secular people too, people out there in the world who are not, or who do not uh, want to hear about God. Um, because of what happened to them in their past, you know, and I can still help them too, you know, because it's love that's in our hearts. It's 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 the desire to to help those who have who are lost and who are I mean lost in every way, emotionally, spiritually, um, you know, and need someone to help them out, need someone to come alongside and 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 offer some support and. You know whether it's biblically or not. You know, but I am, sir, I am working on certification for biblical counseling, and you know, it's it, because there are so many people out there that are hurting. Because I don't, because I was one of them, and you know, that don't know how how much God truly loves them, and they don't know it because they can't see. They can't see that all these things in their life, these tribulations and trials and and whatnot, um, it, we have to learn how to handle them biblically. Because otherwise we're going to end up with a heart full of hatred. That's what happened to me. You know, I was not serving God, and I ended up with a heart full of hatred towards what happened to me. You know, and it wasn't even well, maybe part of it, little part of it, was probably a little bit of hatred towards my my abuser people that abused me and hurt me so so viciously. But the thing is, is most of it was just uh, being depressed and being down about the fact that all this stuff had happened to me, 
And it certainly caused me to feel a certain way, which then made me feel bad because I felt different than everybody else. You know, because it, it, it's like it it, uh, it painted me a different color. You know, that's how I felt. I felt different. And I felt that, you know, that truly what I had experienced had made me an evil person, a bad person, because of the thoughts that were in my heart. Well, of course that's going to happen. Because I was thinking ungodly, and I was thinking with a heart full of hatred. I was thinking with a heart full of evil, even though I thought I was a good person. Until I met the Lord Jesus Christ, and made, you know, and, and actually gave my life to die on the cross with Him, because He died on the cross for me. Praise God! He died on the cross for me, and He was resurrected, and I am resurrected in Him. Praise God! And so, you know, without that, I was going to continue on spiraling downward, downward, downward in this depression, this um, anger-related, you know, um, horrible stuff that had been going on in my spirit and going on in my heart. And so depression, you know, for it, it, it's really important that if we're depressed, you know, that we're not supposed to be looking at the world and looking at things of the world from the world's perspective and the things that have happened to us. We're supposed to be looking at it from God's perspective. And so as a Christian, I mean, that's what we should be doing. Right? So when I was born again, of course, that's what I started doing. But it's taken me time to work through this with the help of the Holy Spirit and looking at, wow, what what is God's will in this and what was God's will in this and you know and and it's a learning experience for me because I didn't grow up in the church you know? and I don't have a whole lot of support you know except I don't need it you know I'm not looking to the world for support but I don't have it so I don't have a lot of wise people coming along to tell me about uh, right now about the truth of this right so I listen to a whole lot of other stuff and I just work with the word. That's the Word of God first place, keeping God first place, and then, you know, listening to those who are really teaching biblically the issues about what's going on in our hearts and and what we're to think and do as people who have so much uh, leftover garbage from being in the world, you know, because a lot of people think that when you're born again, it just all goes away. Oh, isn't that great? Well, it does if, uh, and I believe that that could happen too, I really do, but I also believe that 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 can happen uh, miraculously, if God just so chooses, right? Or if we're just so in line with God's Spirit that we just automatically, I mean, you're out of the world and you're, you know, you're uh, just changed in the instant. You know, I mean, it, 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 otherwise most people don't change that way. And I know, I remember when I was first born again, I could feel God's love and God's mercy, God's, God's Holy Spirit um, coming into my life, into my heart, into my whole being, and changing the way that my heart was. And I could feel the change, you know, literally physically feel it as well as spiritually feel it. And so, uh, you know, I wanted to hang on to that. But as, uh, a few, you know, weeks and months rolled on after being born again, I realized that I still had the same flesh stuff going on. I still had the f- same flesh body, and I'm still going to be in the world with trials and tribulations because that's exactly what's happening. Things will come against us, right? Jesus said, you know, you will have trials and tribulations, but you can overcome. And the reason you can overcome is because I overcame. Jesus says, I overcame the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you can overcome through me in my name. I mean, hallelujah. And it's true. It's so true. But it depends on which way we're looking at it and how we're going to uh, perceive these things that come against us. You know, whether it's uh, physical ailments, whether it's uh, financial stuff, whether it's, you know, personal stuff in our own personal life, you know, like, uh, family matters or things like this, if we're not looking biblically at things and we're not looking through the eyes of, of how God wants us to see things and behave and react, then we're just going to be back in the world, thinking worldly thoughts and doing worldly things, which is you know can lead to depression and lead to those types of things, you know anger and, and jealousy or malice or whatever is going on. And, and we can't be living in the world and be serving God at the same time in that manner. We can't have hatred in our heart and anger and malice and evil in our heart and serve God because the Holy Spirit cannot be around that. The Holy Spirit cannot and will not be around that. You know, the Holy God is holy, and God is is, is a holy God, and that means He's separated from evil. He's separated. He, he wipes out evil. He wipes out darkness. The minute God steps into the picture, you know, it it it, it, it flees. Darkness flees because darkness cannot be around God, and that's why. Satan cannot, and demons cannot indwell a, a Christian who's born again. 
because the, the Holy Spirit lives and dwells and resides within us. <laughs> Praise God. So, you know, it, it's up to us how we want to handle these things, that it, these fleshy things. That really, I mean, that's what they are. It's living, it's the flesh, it's the world. It depends on how we're going to see it. You know, see, like, like, like Adam Plasky says, fear, darkness, depression, reveal an absence of loving God in my neighbor. I mean, the truth of that is, it's, it's very true. Because most of the time, what are we depressed about? Generally, circumstances in our life. And a lot of times it has to do, and you know, many, many times, it's not always just something singular, like towards us that just, you know, like an illness or something that could cause us to be depressed or, or something like that. A lot of times there's someone else involved which causes us to be depressed, whether somebody said something that hurt us or somebody's out, you know, we're not part of a group and we wanted to be part of a group and so we feel like we're alone and that nobody loves us. And if we If we think like that, we're going to be back in the world. Honestly, like we can't think like that and expect that we're going to be walking with God. Because we're not supposed to be looking to the world for our help for anything, <laughs> first of all. You know what I mean? God is our help. God is our source, right? And so I try to remember this stuff. You know, this is very, very important. This is like the basics, like 101, you know, and I'm still in the basics. You know? I'm still learning, right? I'm still like, I'm still like in, in, you know, kindergarten Sunday school. But, you know, like God is showing me through his word that, hey, this is true. God is my source, you know. And God is the one who I am to go to when I need help. When I, I'm not to be wanting to be part of, of circles here on the earth, regardless of whether they're Christian or worldly. If you want to be part of a Christian group and it's causing you to be so d- down because they won't accept you into their little clique, that's being part of the world. Right? Because that Christian group is is in the world, right? If they're not accepting you in with the love of God, and you know, for I'm serious, there's a lot of Christians living in the world. You bet there are, and they go into church every Sunday and they think, hey, I go to church every Sunday, but they are living in the world standards, because God would not have it that way. We have to ask ourselves, how would God have it? How would God want us to react to every single situation? That's the only way we're going to overcome. Is and Jesus said, you can do it through me. You know, praise God. So we have to really think about that. You know, a lot of stuff that we're sitting around being depressed about might be, it, and a lot of it has to do with what happened to, to us in the past or what we didn't get. It's either that, you know, something happened to us that we're just, you know, moaning around, moaning and depressed and not happy with, or something that we didn't get that we thought we should have, that, that we figure we deserve or that we should have. We worked so hard and why didn't we get this? And maybe it's a job promotion. Maybe it's a... Um, you know, uh, a, a certain job, you know, or maybe it's to be able to do something, even something great for somebody else that you're thinking, you know, wow, I wish I could have got that position because I could have helped so many people. That's even still ungodly <laughs> because we're supposed to be content with what God has provided for us. We're not supposed to be coveting and wanting what somebody else has. We're supposed to be blessing those who have those positions. We're supposed to be praying for those people in those positions. So somebody gets a position that I wanted, and let's say somebody takes a, a role, they get a role because, you know, the management feels that that's the role they should have. I'm supposed to be praying for those people and edifying them and building them up. Not sitting there uh, going home at night and sitting on the couch and becoming depressed because I didn't get that role or that job, right? And so a lot of times it's circumstantial. Uh, depression can really, unless, it, you know, if it's not clinical, then it's going to be something like that. It's going to bring us down. Or somebody didn't love me, you know, that's a real big one, actually. Because, I mean, growing up as children growing up, if they don't grow up in a loving home, even if there was like a grandmother or a grandfather or something or an aunt or a, a sibling that actually showed love and care and attention uh, and actually, you know, made sure that they knew they were loved and stuff, that can kind of help. But still, they still be lacking that parental love, and I I know all about this, and that's why I I've been working through um, studying these issues for a lot, well, for five years actually, six years. Um, so, you know, well, five years anyway, five and a half. Still, you know, thinking about these things, right? Because this is the stuff that really hurts people. And then when I was born again, I was like, praise God, God loves me. That's all that matters to me, you know. So my parents didn't love me. Oh well. There's nothing I can do about that. That's their own problem. They have to answer to God for that, for for aggravating their children and for hurting their children on purpose, which was so ungodly. You know, they they're the ones that have to answer for that. They will stand before God. You know, and I mean I pray for them and I have prayed for them. I used to pray for them even when I wasn't born again, uh, but now that I'm born again, it changed my heart to way to you know toward the way I was thinking about them. And I still have uh, still have the 
ability to talk about this stuff and show the reality of the, the harm that abuse does to children and what it does to families and domestic violence and stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm not harboring hatred in my heart for them. Um, I think that I have a, I still have work to do with the help of the Holy Spirit to move into a different view of the abuse. But as far as my abusers go, I mean, I just pray for them. And I pray that God would would have mercy because that's what I obtained through the cross. When Jesus died for me on that cross, I obtained eternal mercy from God. That means my sins are wiped out, no longer even seen by God. He remembers them no more. Uh, He chooses to remember them no more. So I I pray for my unbelieving uh, and unsaved, really, um, parents. And how do I know if they're saved or not? I don't know. I don't think anybody can ever know if somebody's unsaved. That person will know whether they've accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior and whether or not they've done that. And that's that's up to the person. And so I just pray that God, you know, would have mercy because they they, they need it. <laughs> you know, like people that go around doing ungodly, unrighteous, evil acts towards other people. And that's even have, having something wrong in your heart towards somebody. That doesn't even mean uh, physically hurting them or, or sexually abusing somebody or whatever, sexually assaulting somebody. That's having a bad thought in your heart towards somebody. And we all do it. And I've I've talked to pastors out there, and pastors will admit, absolutely everybody does it. And we have to get that we have to repent, which means, you know, turn around, go the other direction, go towards God, don't run from him, run to him, and change that behavior, change that thought pattern in our lives so that we're not thinking those ungodly thoughts and allow God to show us how to walk in love, you know, and how to serve and how to properly care for people and have the, the compassion that God has. It can't be coming from us because human man, mankind with us in their fallen state can't do it. We don't have it. But God does. And so with the help of, of, of God, we can do that. That's why Jesus says you can overcome. You can overcome through me. I overcame the world. And he did that on purpose so that we could overcome. He died on that cross and was resurrected so that we could be resurrected with him. He took the keys of death away from Satan. He took the keys of death away. So, you know, they're, 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 we're no longer separated from God. And we're no longer separated and, 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 and headed for an eternal separation, an eternal death uh, away from God. And he, cre- and he is the way. I mean, Jesus set, provided it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, you know, we can overcome. And there are going to be hurtful things in the times where we're going to need the help of somebody here to show us the truth in God's word and to help and just to, to hug us and just to say, you know what? It's, God loves you. Don't forget that. God loves you and we and, and we have to figure out through the word what's God what God's will is in this. And so that we can have, keep our hearts right with God. And, you know, that's about the only way we're going to be able to overcome any of these, you know, tragic situations in life that come about. And some of it's just normal stuff. You know, the flesh body dies and people die around us and people get sick and people even get older and live their whole full lives out and pass away, you know, because that's what happens. It's reality. (laughs) It's like, you know, this is reality. But it's hard for a lot of people to face that, you know, because they love that person and they don't want to, they figure they're losing that person. You know, and so that can cause a lot of depression. A lot of physical pain can cause depression. People who are physical ailments, like physical illness, people becoming sick and then, you know, can't do what they used to be able to do. People becoming sick and and actually terminally ill and dying uh, at a young age. And, you know, it's it's a hard thing to see uh, because, you know, we all, we all, maybe you love that person so dearly and you don't want them to pass away. Or maybe, maybe we're that person that's, that's developed this disease or, or something it happened to us and we're sick and we're we're dying or whatever, we have to realize that, you know what, this earth body is not going to leave here, uh, you know, uh, in, the sh- in this shape, right? And when Jesus comes and raptures the church, well, not, you know, only so many people are going to be going up in that, that are going to be on the planet at that time. There was, so yeah, there, there, people are going to pass away, the, the flesh body. But then we can rejoice in the fact that we know you know, if we're born again and we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior and we have eternal life through Him, in Him, with Him, that God has prepared a place for us. And that's my joy in that. Because I'm so excited about that. Because I'm thinking, hey, I want to do God's will while I'm here on the planet for the rest of the days that I'm here, that God knows I'm here. 
uh, and God set before me the plan, right? Um, and I just want to do God's will. And then when I go to be with him, praise God, I'm going to be so happy. I'm just going to be praising the Lord and praising God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And I'm just going to be praising and shouting for joy and um, humbly, you know, just serving God forever, for eternity. Praise God. <laughs> That's beautiful to me. So that kind of helps keep me out of, of, of depression, depressive thoughts. You know, that's what I, I remember. I get back into the Bible and I start looking at God's promises and God's and the truth of God's word to show me, hey, you know, we're not to be thinking about as the world thinks. We're supposed to be thinking as God thinks. We're not supposed to be acting and doing doing what the world wants. We're supposed to be doing what God wants. And it's not about having friends and social status and money and all this stuff. It's about doing the will of God. And that keeps me from being depressed. It really does. Because I get up every day and I'm like, not my will, Lord, thy will. Because if it's my will, it's going to be no good and it's going to be useless and worthless. Thy will, you know. And, I'm, and I have to really stay on track with that because I don't want my will to, to win over here. I want God's will to win over because God, God, God is, 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 is supreme. He's sovereign. He is almighty. The almighty God. Who am I to tell God what to do? Who am I to try to push my weight around with God as if we ever could? There are people out there that do this, but you, it's it's impossible. It's, and God loves us. Can you imagine the immense wealth, the, the immense amount of love? that God is love. Get a hold of that one, you know, for just a few minutes. I mean, it's like, praise God, you know? But if we don't, if we don't put on Christ and put on God's love, then we're going to be depressed. You know, because living in this world, if we're living in a worldly world and we're living for the world, we're going to be depressed. We're going to be uh, down. But when you put on, when when I put on Christ and I put on God's love, there's no way to be down, because you see the world through God's eyes then, and you see how much the world needs the love of God, and you stop kind of thinking about yourself then and you start thinking about other people and that God wants all of his children to come home to be with him. God wants us all to to receive his son and receive eternal life, right? And wants God wants people to know that he loves them. You know, praise God. Well, that's about it for the show today. God bless you all, Lord willing. Be back on Friday and uh, I just wish you a beautiful day and I just pray that God would just bless you and keep you and you know, God would just show you the truth in his word and get into the word and start searching it out, you know. It speaks very clearly to us. It's not hard to understand. And um, get into, you know, I don't have a good church because I haven't found uh, a good Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. I found a lot of churches who are doing a lot of worldly stuff, and I'm not interested in that. I can do that on my own. I, I don't want to get back into the world, you know. I can do that myself, you know, in a, quickly, right? Like I'm trying to stay out of the world. And uh, the world's ways of thinking and the world's ways of doing things. And there's a lot of churches that I've been to that are just doing the worldly stuff and actually just putting the name of God on it. Um, and I'm not interested in that. They don't have any 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 uh, desire to to actually allow the Holy Spirit in the church. And I, I you know, so I, I don't have a church, but that's okay because I don't need that. God will show me what I am to do. So just allow God in your heart. You know, allow Him to show you what to do, and get into his word. And if you're suffering and you're having a hard time dealing with things, reach out to somebody, even in the world, even if it's a worldly thing, reach out to somebody who can help, a counselor, a therapist, whatever you have to do. But, but, but reach out to God as well, because he's listening, he is there, right? God bless God bless you all. Talk to you soon, Lord willing.